Hi, my name is Annalise Perfermant and I've recently completed the class Software Engineering at Monash University as part of a Masters of Computer Science. This class was challenging at times, but overall I had quite a bit of fun and in less than 10 minutes, here is what I learned. So what was my experience of this subject? Yes, I said it was fun, but it was also very, very chaotic and I've never had to work so hard for a university assignment. We had a mildly functional project group and in the space of only three weeks, we produced a somewhat functional desktop app, which had job posting and job seeking functionality, sort of like a Seek or a LinkedIn Lite. I was lucky that work gave me five days off uh, for study leave. So I was really able to get into the zone. And during that time, I have to say that I was actually really, really excited every day to get up and start coding and code for hours and hours. So I will cover what about the course uh, structure and the group project made this such a chaotic experience. But while I was uh, doing this software engineering class, there are a few things happening in parallel and also that have happened since. So this class was the first time where I started really seriously considering whether I would perhaps move away from the area that I work in currently, data analytics, and maybe consider uh, more engineering work. So shortly after finishing this class, I set off on what I call my engineering reconnaissance tour. So I booked in uh, calls with 10 or so engineers uh, in my workplace, covering things from cybersecurity to platforms to cloud infrastructure, uh, backend uh, app development, including as well um, a number of data engineers and getting to know them and asking them what their day-to-day -day was like and how they got into those areas. The other thing that happened during this uh, class for me was that I was onboarded into a new team, which is an analytics pipeline team. And this has been really fantastic because I'm working with a manager who has also studied a master's of computer science and he's really into object oriented programming. He really pushes uh, good engineering principles. And thanks to this class, actually, I have a slightly better grasp of all these things that he's talking to us about. On to the course structure and the assessment. So to summarize this course, I would say it was one, learn how to run a software development project and two, now go and do that. You've got three weeks and you're going to work with a group of people that you've never worked with before. So as part of this, we learned about uh, the software development lifecycle. We learned about the unified process, agile waterfall using Kanban boards, scoping a project, uh, requirements analysis, so on and so forth. From a programming point of view, we continue to focus on object-oriented programming. The whole course was in Java. We learned about the MVC model view controller architecture. We covered things like code quality, refactoring code, and unit testing. In terms of the assessment breakdown, we had 10% for uh, project requirements analysis. So considering the requirements for this job seeking and uh, searching software, what were the features that were required? And we had to write user stories for each of these features, including relevant acceptance criteria. The uh, next part was project design. This was 40% of the grade. So we produced wireframes. So what was the desktop app actually going to look like? And we had to demonstrate uh, Ben Schneiderman's eight usability principles. So this included things like, is the design consistent? Is it usable? Does it provide feedback? Does it help prevent errors? Can users reverse things? And is the short-term memory load reduced? We also had to, as part of this, produce a UML class diagram. Finally, the bulk of the work, 50%, was the project development, testing, and implementation. So this included the code, of course, with uh, a couple of features implemented that were non-negotiable. So we had to have login and logout for different types of users, including admin users, recruiters, and job seekers. So job seekers needed to have the ability to manage their profile and recruiters needed to have the ability to create and post jobs. We also had to have uh, matching between jobs and job seekers, uh, both ways working. Then uh, as part of this 50% uh, uh, part of the assignment, we had to do some white box testing. We had to have a video where we click through the whole demo. And we also had to demonstrate that we did perform code review and that our code was documented. So what was our tool set for this desktop app, uh, which gave us job seeking and job posting functionality. So when we created our wireframes, we used Balsamic. It's a free website. It was fantastic. We use Lucid Chart for the UML diagram. We use GitLab for version control. 
Uh, in terms of the code proper, we use Java and JavaFX. Our environment for coding was IntelliJ. For storing data, we used CSVs. It was kind of gross, but we had little time. We did consider using Postgres and working with a known framework, but we really didn't have the time to learn that. So we just stuck to plain old reading and writing from CSVs for the data. We also used ChatGPT, and it was actually one of the course requirements that we do use ChatGPT and document just how we had used it. So personally, I used it a lot for documentation. Uh, no one likes writing doc strings. No one likes summarizing things. ChatGPT does it really quickly. And the other thing as well is when you want a quick piece of code written up, you kind of roughly know what you want. ChatGPT will do it correctly. Syntax, it will run. It's great. One thing though, ChatGPT is fantastic, but it's not fully going to solve your problem. It's not going to be able to structure your program in the best way. It's not going to be able to think through exactly the best design for putting all your bits and pieces together. So that's really where the skill of the software engineer will remain despite the development of things like ChatGPT. All right, let's talk about the real source of the challenge in this course. 90% of the mark was group projects. So group projects are really difficult at the best of times, but in this case, it was effectively almost the entire grade. In terms of the structure of the team, I was very lucky. I had a friend from my undergraduate course uh, in my team. He's a fantastic guy that I met studying vector calculus many years ago. Fantastic to work with him. We also had a very hardworking guy come from interstate. And finally, we had a fourth teammate who was uh, someone who had previously done an undergraduate in computer science. So he definitely had a lot more knowledge and experience with software development. In terms of uh, how it started and communication wise, it did not get off to a good start. Our first team meeting, we were brainstorming, discussing the design, all the requirements we needed to meet and how we might organize this project. I unfortunately was not able to finish a single sentence I started because I kept being interrupted by this fourth teammate and it got to a point about 30 minutes into the call where I had to say, Hey mate, I appreciate you've got a lot of knowledge and you really want to share it with the team, but I would really appreciate it if I could finish at least one sentence that I have started. So please stop talking over me. Really not a fun thing to have to say, especially to a bunch of people that, you know, you're trying to get off on the right foot, but I really didn't see myself putting up with this sort of behavior for the rest of the course. This uh, team, I think, really struggled with project planning. We had access to tools such as Trello, but we did not use them. We did also discuss um, Git, and I really, um, I thought it would be a good idea for the team to do a refresher before we started programming. Uh, this is something that I've done for my graduates at work. So covering things like, how do you create a branch? When do you open a pull request? How do you do a code review? Um, everyone kindly declined and said they were fine, but unfortunately when we got to the programming part of the assignment, not a single pull request was opened, which meant that everyone was just merging to master, which was very stressful because people pushed errors to master and then things would suddenly stop working. Uh, in terms of um, how the project evolved in time, I think we finally did get into a very good rhythm. So uh, two of the guys took care of the front end and then one of the guys took care of the back end. And then I worked on the interfacing. So everything pretty much connecting the dots. I found this really fun because I felt like I was a detective trying to figure out like where the pieces should fit together. And I was also able to do a lot of refactoring as well. In terms of how we finished up this project, when we got to the final presentation, I think we did really pull things together. We really did uh, do our best with the time that we had, and we did point out the shortcomings of our project. There were many things we could have done better in terms of the scalability in terms of the algorithms that were implemented, so on and so forth. I think there was a lot of scope for us to improve, um, but I did think that we were very honest in our assessment of our own work. And so I think that that all in all was a very good learning opportunity for us. In terms of the academic support in this software engineering course, I felt that it was perhaps lacking. In every other class in this master's course, we've always had two teachers supporting us. And in this class, we only had one. He's a very good teacher. He taught us Java programming, but Invariably, at some point he fell sick, and so that meant that we weren't able to get support at moments where we really needed help. The assessment was, as I've said, very challenging, so that definitely had an impact on our learning and our ability to do well, I believe. So the other thing that I will point out as well, um, related very much to the first, is that we did not get feedback in a timely manner. So 
the first assessment, 10%, we, we got feedback for that a couple of weeks later. But the second uh, component, which was the design component, we only got feedback for that in the final week of the course, which was the same week we actually had to hand up the third part of the assessment, which was the whole implementation. So having had no feedback on the design until the last moment made it really difficult for us and we weren't able to action any of that. So I think that this is a shortcoming in this course and I really do hope that Monash University remedies this the next time that they run this class. So long story short, this software engineering class was both hard and chaotic, but I really, really enjoyed the programming side of things, the problem solving side of things. In the end, we got a distinction and the next class that I'm taking is Computer and Information Security, which I'm super excited for. So I'll let you all know how that goes.